Freemasonry. An ancient fraternity shrouded in mystery. With roots stretching back to the medieval stonemasons, its age-old traditions have remained virtually unchanged for centuries. When people hear the word Freemason, they think about funny handshakes, uh, they think about rolled up trouser legs. If you do a little bit of Googling, it's a cabal of people that are taking over governments and things. Freemasonry, secrecy, secret society, 100%. Now, as the Brotherhood celebrates its 300th anniversary, the United Grand Lodge of England is allowing the cameras in for the first time to reveal what really goes on behind closed doors. Right, now, will you bugger off? <laughs> <laughs> With unprecedented access, we lift the veil of secrecy to discover what it means to be a modern-day Freemason. I feel a bit inadequate. It's a lot of fancy aprons. A lot of fancy aprons. From the regalia... My mum might say I look like a complete Wally, but you can never please your mum. Forward, brethren. To the lavish ceremonies. You will seal that with your lips. And ancient rituals. Do you have anything to give in the name of charity? No. All of the rituals that we do, which are like little plays, I love them. <laughs> and of course, the unbreakable bonds of brotherhood. Yeah. Some that, brother. <laughs> Describe it, you go, why would anyone want to do that? But once you're in it, you get it. So tell me a surprising Masonic fact. Surprising Masonic fact? <laughs> <laughs> there are no goats involved. <laughs> to spoil the whole illusion. <laughs> Oh dear. Today, there are six million Freemasons around the world. But London is where it all started 300 years ago. Freemasons Hall in Covent Garden is headquarters to the United Grand Lodge of England and the spiritual home of Freemasonry. This is the Grand Temple for Freemasonry in England. It's the, if you like, the equivalent of Twickenham to English rugby. The right worshipful Jonathan Spence has been a Freemason since 1982. Freemasonry is a secular organisation which encourages its members to become better members of their community by using ritual. And the metaphor that's used throughout is that of building and how when you build something, you improve as you go through life. Now Deputy Grand Master, Jonathan is one of Freemasonry's rulers, third only to the Grand Master himself, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. How does one get to be a ruler? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. If I knew the answer to that, I might be able to tell you. Today, Jonathan will be leading one of the year's biggest Masonic events, quarterly communication. So now we have to get ourselves ready, get into a tail coach for the next part of the day. Despite being little more than a glorified business meeting, quarterly communication will be attended by 1,400 Masons from across the country and even the world. Quarterly communication is quite a formal business meeting and the decisions can range from setting the dues for the following year to whether it's appropriate to recognise a Grand Lodge of another country. While the content of the meeting may lack colour, the same can't be said of the build-up. There's a rather a long procession. It's quite something when you walk in through those double doors and see the Grand Lodge open before you. And then you have the, the daunting prospect of realising it's actually all contingent on you actually starting it. Um, that is a moment of fear when you look around and realise that uh, you've got to get it right.
Freemasonry believes in brotherly love, relief, and truth as a way to make good men better. The main premise is we're all equal. It's as simple as that. Yes, there will be people who do different roles, but fundamentally, we are all the same. Despite its reputation for secrecy, or perhaps because of it, Freemasonry has prospered for over 300 years. All walks of life, everybody you can think of are Freemasons and can become Freemasons from um, dustbin men through to, to top judges. It's open to anybody. The lessons Freemasonry teaches are 100% relevant. For as long as mankind requires morality and ethics, Freemasonry has something to teach you. Freemasonry enables me to understand myself as an individual, as a man. I think the type of person that gravitates towards Freemasonry is Curious. Uh, and I don't mean curious weird, I mean intellectually curious. Eager to join the Freemason fraternity is 40-year-old Bedfordshire farmer James Wooden. By joining the Masons, I'm home to meet a broader spectrum of friends, people from outside farming, people with different opinions, and uh, see what's behind all, all what goes on. So yes, yeah, I'm excited about it. Because there is so many um, tales and things with it that, uh, yeah, we'll see what the truth is, hopefully. <laughs> Go on in. Go on in. Well, when he came to me and said he wanted to be a mason, it, 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 it was a marvellous feeling, and uh, my heart nearly missed a beat, I think. It's a great comfort to know I've got somebody very close to me and in the family who uh, I can discuss things with and we can help each other, he can watch my back and I can watch his. James's father, Edward, has been practicing the craft for 50 years and is proud of his family's Masonic heritage. This is my father. He was in the lodge and uh, he never put me under pressure to join masonry, but even then it was apparent to me of the advantages of being a mason as opposed to not being a mason in the sense that you had a certain amount of ring protection around you, which, which made you comfortable. Right, Paul. Can't believe it. Oh, I can't hit him. He's very proud, and I, I feel as though um, I wish I'd perhaps thought of joining earlier, because this is his big interest, and it will give me, you know, something in common to um, sort of blossom and bond. Since his father was involved, I thought at some point he might decide to join, but I didn't know quite when. I think it's quite a good thing that he's joining, though. His dad's been really very happy about it all, but um, it's, uh, there's a lot of, sort of myths and stories, and it's quite hard to find out what really happens. And I'm definitely going to be questioning James later, although I'm not sure how much he's going to give away, but I'm going to have a go at finding out. Yeah, I got the suit and everything, so... Yeah, the um, suit my father bought me. My father has never, never taken me shopping. Never. He's uh, quite cautious with his spending. So, yeah, it's quite an experience. That was an experience in his own, which perhaps means that, yeah, it's all going to be quite special, this. So, yeah, something new. Yeah. This is be the uh, suit I keep that my father bought. So, hopefully, I've got all the gear. I've got no idea. So, all the gear, no idea. What, what could possibly go wrong, you know? <laughs> there are three stages to becoming a fully-fledged mason. They are known as degrees. In each degree, the candidate is given certain secrets, a sign, a handshake, and a word. When you are initiated to the first degree, you become an entered apprentice. Can I do it one more time or we got it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting into it now. During the initiation, the candidate must bear one of his breasts. This is to show that he is not a woman. In just a few hours, Bedfordshire farmer James Wooden will become a Freemason. 
Look at the class of that animal. Look at that. Look at the bum on it. Ahead of the infamous initiation ceremony, James's father Edward is keen to reassure his nervous son and soon to be brother. Everybody of every generation has gone through this ceremony. You are blindfolded when you go into the temple, and there is a reason for that, which I can't really tell you now, but it will be fully explained why that's the way you are received into masonry. And you follow someone in, someone. You will have walks somebody in. leading you in. He is called the junior deacon. He just leads you around until the point when the blindfold is taken off and then you can walk around it yourself. You'll see where you're going. Right, crikey. Something to uh, get nervous about, but yeah, sounds very exciting. Like his father and five generations of wooden men before him, James is joining the Russell Lodge in Bedford. Okay, right, follow me. Now, the candidate this evening will be put in there prior to coming upstairs, so he doesn't get to really meet anybody until uh, the ceremony's underway. So, poor chap's going to be put on his lonesome. Worshipful brother Anthony Henderson is the lodge's highest ranking member. Welcome to the Russell Lodge. As in all Masonic lodges, signs and symbols are everywhere. They help you reflect and uh, realize, or uh, fully understand what's right from wrong, to be charitable and uh, mindful of the needs of others. In the lodge, a rough stone known as an ashlar represents the as yet unformed initiate. So when we have taken the rough stone and educated and polished it up, we end up with a perfect stone, and that's what we hope all the brethren will become. And initiations are a very special evening for the, for the lodge because it's, it's new blood coming into the lodge. The whole family comes around thrilled to pieces that they've got a new member of their family because they are like a newborn baby. You right? Right. Next time I see you, you will be a mason. Right. Crikey. It's a very proud day for me. It's really up there, we're getting married. <laughs> Quite emotional. Mm. Stonemasons wore aprons and gloves as protection when working. For Freemasons, they serve a different purpose. Well, we're just about to go into the meeting. I'm going to get uh, my regalia on. That denotes my rank in Grand Lodge. It is quite peculiar. You're in the room on your own. You're in isolation. It is a different atmosphere. Very intimidating in a way. With the brethren assembled in the lodge room, the outer guard, or Tyler, is dispatched to fetch the initiate. James, come with me, please. You feel as though you're being summoned. You're going up for a, the ultimate job interview or something like that, really. It's not for the faint-hearted. Before the ceremony, the initiate must be physically prepared which includes being blindfolded, or as Masons say, hoodwinked. Though we've been given unprecedented access, this is one ceremony that cannot be filmed. To preserve the mystery for future candidates, only Masons can witness the initiation ritual, and the Tyler is stationed outside to guard against Cowans or eavesdroppers. We don't tell candidates necessarily what to expect in the initiation because you can only go through it once. And if you know exactly what's going to happen, then it will spoil it. You walk into the ceremony with uh, certain trepidations. Their friends might have ribbed them a little bit about, you know, sheeps and goats and things of that sort. The candidate is blindfolded. The candidate might have a noose around 
uh, the neck. And yes, there is a rolled up trouser leg, but that's really just to uh, going back to the old days of stonemasons when um, workmen had to prove that they were they were fit and able. It alludes to a rebirth, if you like. It is it is your entrance into masonry, and uh, you get given the light. That's when a, an individual becomes a brother. By the time Brother James emerges in his new white apron symbolizing innocence, he is in possession of a secret handshake, a secret word, and a secret sign, so that if required, he can prove to other Masons that he is an entered apprentice. Very plain apron compared to everyone else's. It, uh, it really marks that you're a, you're a newbie. So yeah, I'm officially Officially in. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Just a two. Just the two. Yeah. My father shook my hand as a as a mason, as a fellow brother, and it was a really important moment. It was really, you know, a real nugget of gold for me that I'll, I'll always remember because you know at my age, you know, you don't get many of those moments anymore. You're not you're not a young boy anymore. So to have your dad pleased for you, and that that, that sinks in. You know, you you feel all puffed up and. Glad you've done it. Mm. Brethren, please stand to order to receive your worshipful master, accompanied by the deputy provincial grand master and the initiate. That is an excellent night. Typical, what we call a rational evening, especially with his father being here. You know, it was such a pleasant, lovely experience for him. The brethren all enjoyed themselves and they all performed this superbly. It was, it was really good. And it's what Mason is all about. Everyone enjoying themselves and having a great time. Look at that. It's amazing how a bit of dust gets up here, you know? Well, this is my little converted loft. Um, we had this done two years ago now. As you can see, my collection was growing quite large. Tony, a regional business manager, has devoted 34 years of his life to the Brotherhood and spends up to 15 hours a week on his masonry. Beautiful. But it's not his only passion. I know pretty much each one. The big Ferrari, that's quite a rare animal. In two weeks' time, in recognition of his service to the Brotherhood, Tony's being elevated to the highest rank in the county, Provincial Grand Master. It's a bit like winning the lottery, albeit I've never I've only won small amounts on the lottery, so, and that's exciting enough. It's quite a, a responsibility. The brethren look to the Provincial Grand Master as an example to them of how a Freemason should be. Right, pour them into the bowl. Tony's promotion is big news in the Henderson household. This next week, Grandad's going to be made the Provincial Grand Master of Bedfordshire. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the installation of a PGM is a once-in-a-decade event and will be attended by some 500 Masons from Bedfordshire and beyond. It's coming at me very quickly at the moment, so I'm trying to get things organised. Hopefully I won't get too emotional throughout the day, but uh, who knows, we shall see. Today, Tony's visiting the regalia specialists to make sure his aprons look their sparkling best. If you're <laughs> extremely fortunate to be appointed uh, a provincial grand master, you're entitled to wear one of these beautiful things. Five-pointed star in the center, the three gold levels still there, and then we have this ornate and elaborate uh, embroidery around the edge of prime granites and sunflowers and vine leaves because they feature in the ceremonial throughout the Freemasonry. And it's a wonderful thing. An ornate apron can easily set its owner back up to a thousand pounds, so it pays to look after them. I acquired these from the office. Uh -huh. 
but unfortunately the panel, as you can see, is rather worse for wear. Yeah. But um, it's got these stains could, on here. I think what we could do with that is we've got a new skin fitted in that for you. Right. I don't think the belt will need extending. I'm slightly <laughs> larger than the previous occupants of these. So uh, if you've ever said to me, Way back in 1990, you know, one day you'll be the provincial grandmaster. I'd have said, <laughs> you, you must be joking. <laughs> but uh, here we are. Yeah. I'll pack these away. Okay. But there's more to Freemasonry than just rank and regalia. The ritual is what makes uh, Freemasonry unique. There are messages that are imparted through the ritual. And this ritual has been passed down from generation to generation over hundreds of years. There is ritual in Freemasonry because ritual is part of the structure. It's like amateur dramatics and, and people who want to learn and act out playlets, which is what we do, and do it in a word perfect manner. That, that gives a lot of people great satisfaction. Without the ritual, it would be quite boring to be a Freemason. Brother Walsh, as you have passed through the ceremony of your initiation, let me congratulate you on being admitted a member of our ancient and honourable institution. In Oxfordshire, sales engineer brother Josh Spencer is trying to master a 900-word piece of ritual known as the charge. Ancient no doubt it is, as having subsisted from time immemorial, and honourable it must be acknowledged to be, as by natural tendency it conduces to make those so who are obedient to its precepts. The charge is designed to help the candidate newly admitted into Freemasonry understand what's expected of him. I really like to perform a good piece of ritual and, and give it with meaning and, and try and ensure that the person who is receiving it um, gets a, a benefit out of it which I want to put across. I feel glad to have already kind of done the main learning. <laughs> I'm now just polishing it. Being able to deliver that to a new candidate I think is really something special. Um, my grandfather delivered my charge at my initiation um, and I saw the tears in his eyes so I know how powerful it can be when it's delivered well. There were tears in mine. Tonight Josh is attending his lodge's final rehearsal before the ceremony. Oh good, good. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might enjoy yeah, that. Yeah. From a family of eminent masons, Josh is currently senior warden, and at the age of just 25, is soon to become its worshipful master, the top man in the lodge. Joshua is an excellent officer of the lodge. He's a fourth generation Freemasonry, and Joshua has been around Freemasonry almost from the day he was born. Brother Senior Warden, would you please deliver the charge? Oh, I'd normally... <laughs> Certainly, Worshipful Master. Brother Walsh, as you have passed through the ceremony of your initiation, let me congratulate you on being admitted a member of our ancient and honourable institution. We're trying to achieve the accuracy for the officers delivering the work. Like any uh, performance, they know how well they've delivered that, and that's where they get the buzz from, ultimately nailing a piece of ritual. Be especially careful to maintain, maintain in their fullest splendour those truly Masonic ornaments, which have already been amply illustrated. Benevolence and charity. But it should be fun. The learning should be fun. The delivering of it should be fun. And it is. I'm led to hope you will duly appreciate the value of Freemasonry and indelibly imprint on your heart the sacred dictates of truth, of honour and of virtue. You deliver the charge extremely well. Just don't forget, part of this is timing. The candidate's hearing it for the first time. So just pause on moments of emphasis. You know where they are. And right at the end of it, every time you've delivered the charge, you get a little bit stuck on closing edge. Just remember that bit. But other than that, super stuck. You've worked very hard on that, obviously. Yeah. Thanks. Happy? Yeah, all good? Yeah, yeah looking forward to it. Well, I think they were suitably pleased, so that was good. Um, uh, as you can tell, David has quite exacting standards, but uh, I think we met those, so I'm happy for next week. But if Josh is to meet his lodge's exacting standards, he must be word perfect in just six days. Your initiation, let me congratulate you on being admitted a member of our ancient and honourable institution.
famous foreign Freemasons include Buffalo Bill, John Wayne, and many, many more. <laughs> Sorry. I just can't remember the bloody names. Famous foreign Masons include Houdini, Nat King Cole, Mozart, and others. <laughs> In Bedfordshire, dedicated Freemason Anthony Henderson is still digesting the news that he's soon to become the province's Grand Master. The PGM, he is the, the head of the order within your province. He's someone to look up to, and when, the, when he comes to visit a lodge, uh, it's a great occasion. The lodger feel very honoured about the presence of the Bridge Grand Master being there, and the brethren, you know, have something to aspire to. I'm sure they're here. Here they are. Look, look. Oh, God, we're in trouble tonight. This is Tony's mother lodge, where he was initiated 34 years ago. Hello, Gina. Good, thanks. You. Hello, John. Oh, yeah. Did you sort me fruit salad? Yes, it's coming. It's Thank you very much. I bought one myself. <laughs> John. How's things? All good, right. you? Dick. All right, Tony. Keep well? Yes, thanks, yeah. Jolly good. You know what they say? It's not the cough that carries them off, it's the coffin they carry them off in. Hello, Jeff. How are you? All right. Good luck, mate. Nice to see you. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. The thing I think will be different is when I come to lodge meetings, wear the, the new regalia, be provincial grand master, be saluted in a different way, uh, be looked upon by the brethren in a different way, I'm sure. But uh, it won't change a great deal. It'll be. In fact, I'm hoping we shall enjoy the, the experience even more. In just a few days' time, Tony will be officially installed and take over the running of the entire province. Brotherly love. Right, let's go get ready. Most Masons, when visiting a lodge, will request admission. As Provincial Grand Master, he demands admission. That's how important he is. A brother that attains to such heights takes his Freemasonry very seriously. No brother will get that form of promotion if they're just willy-nilly with Freemasonry. He's the boss, he's the man that, uh, that guides the province, and he's appointed by London, by United Grand Lodge. We are all equal, but as with most things, some are more equal than others. This is the current Provincial Grand Master, who's in the centre at the back there. Uh, his predecessor is this one over here. It's, it's, a, it's a likeness, but it's not him. And he wasn't very pleased with it, I know. Uh, a bit disappointed when he saw it. Tony has always been destined for the top. Um, when um, the current Provincial Grand Master announced that uh, he was standing down, everyone thought that uh, Tony would be the man for the job if he wanted it. This will change around, so Mike will be moved into a position over here, and then uh, a picture of myself, I presume, they'll uh, put somewhere in place of honour, which uh, we haven't had done yet, so. He, he's, he will be a very, very good person. He's, he's, one, he's one of us. There's the chain I shall be wearing. And it'll be quite a heavy chain to bear. <laughs> In Oxfordshire, Brother Josh Spencer, the rising star of his lodge, is having a last run through the ritual he must deliver during an initiation ceremony later tonight. Indeed, no institution can be, boast a more solid foundation than that on which Freemasonry rests. This time, with the help of girlfriend Naomi. Justice. Justice. I think it's really important to deliver a piece of ritual to act as really a, an initial explanation and guide as to what is expected of them. So do you do this charge when you're purely just initiating someone? Yes. The initiation probably has about an hour's worth of work by other people beforehand. And then the kind of stage is set for me to deliver that. To after. deliver this. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So um, all, all eyes are on me at that point. Oh, quite important then. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think the night of initiation is probably the most important for any candidate, um, and so we like to really make sure that it's the best night you can possibly have. Cheers, good on you, man. Without a gin and tonic, I'm waiting to Good evening. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Will. Yeah, it should be Looking good. Looking forward to it, are you? Yes, it should be good. Oh, good. Cool. Yeah. The ritual involves members of the lodge acting out a short, symbolic two-act play. Josh's piece, known as The Charge, is the ceremony's big finale. It's busier than I was expecting it to be, but this is, uh, this is good. I'm sure I'll rise to the occasion. Being able to deliver a piece like the charge after initiation is really special. I don't think you can ever deny that. Um, it's elating. As always, the ceremony is for Masonic eyes only. Masonry is a society regarded as having secrets, but they're not secrets that are horrible or sinister. Freemasonry uh, isn't a secret society. It is a society with secrets. We try and keep bits of it secret because that makes it more enjoyable. It's like having a surprise party and knowing everybody who's coming and what your gifts are. It's not going to be the same if it's not a surprise. Good evening. Good night. Yes. Good night. Very good. Well done. Thank you. I think it panned out well for everyone, really. Once you get to this stage and you've done the work that's required, then you just relax into it and enjoy the evening. In Freemasonry, a meeting is always followed by a meal known as the festive board. The festive board at initiation is superb. Uh, you've got the Ents Apprentices, he now is, sat next to the Worshipful Master, and there are sets of toasts which are given um, for various positions. So there's always a set order to the toasts during a festive board. The first half really is to do with the lodge and the evening and the people present. The worshipful master would now like to take wine with all the provincial officers Master would be very pleased to take wine with our new initiate. Yeah. Those are followed by heartfelt toasts to the Worshipful Master for his work and, of course, the visitors. The Worshipful Master would now like us all to take wine with our And then the second half is more formal, so there's always a toast to the Queen and the craft as well. Queen of the Crowd. Their old toast is Royal Highness Duke of Kent. Grandmaster. They'll toast Program Master, Assistant Grand Master, and so on. Grand there are toasts to the provincial or the metropolitan um, Grand Lodges as well. Queen's Grand Master. After an initiation, there is a song to the initiates. Um, and it's something that people normally within the lodge hold quite dear to their heart before they deliver it. Come, let us prepare, we brothers that are assembled on merry occasion. Let's drink, Let's drink, laugh, and sing. Our wine has a spring. Here's a health to an accepted mason. Let's drink, laugh, and sing. Our wine has a spring. Here's a health to an accepted mason. And it would go a little bit like that. Then join hand in hand to each other good stand. Let's be merry and put a bright face on. What mortal can boast so noble a toast than a free and unaccepted mason?
good tip to tell every brother to try his apron on well before he goes to the lodge. In Bedford, Tony Henderson has taken delivery of his newly restored Provincial Grand Master's apron. Well, Ooh. don't catch that. Wow. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Wow, who would ever thought it? Wish my father was alive to see it today. Tony's installation as Provincial Grand Master for Bedfordshire is just 24 hours away. An installation for the province, it's a fantastic, massive occasion. You know, such a thrill for everybody, and uh, it's a day of nervousness, a bit like the wedding day. This is it. There's no turning back. The square and compasses are the universally recognised sign of Freemasonry. Originally, the square and compasses were used, of course, by stonemasons, but Freemasons view them symbolically. The square represents square conduct as we go through our lives. The compasses remind us to modify our conduct and to keep ourselves in due bound. If you are a Freemason, you are said to be on the square. Freemasonry is basically one big building analogy, but instead of working on a real building, you work on yourself, building character. Worshipful brother Anthony Henderson has a date with destiny. I can't believe the day's here already. Time has flown so quickly. I've got my regalia. Got some cash. Gonna take the phone. Gifts. End of. As long as you don't forget me, I think. Well, I can always ring you up, can I? I'm at work. <laughs> I've got to go to work. <laughs> right, I'm just going to check the mirror. It's worse than a woman. Yeah, I'm nervous now, you see. And we tend to lose sight of what's truly important in life and the right way to treat our fellow human beings. And that's the beauty of Freemasonry. There's no distinctions amongst men. They're all brothers together. And that is what the world should be about. See you, boy. Have a lovely day. Mm. Enjoy you. yourself. Mm. Love you too. See you, sir. I'll you call too. you later. Yeah, thanks. Okay. I'll soon. try. Today, at the Bedford Corn Exchange, with an audience of Masons from across the country, Anthony is to be installed as Bedfordshire's new Provincial Grand Master. The icing on the cake for Anthony and his Bedfordshire brethren is that the ceremony is being conducted by one of English Freemasonry's rulers. Hello, I'm Johnson Spence. How do you do? The you. Deputy Grand Master. Hello, very nice to meet you. Hello. But the provinces, if, if a ruler attends, I hesitate to say this, but they do seem to rather enjoy it. How do you do? And you? And certainly the incoming provincial Grand Master will want to make sure that their province performs very well so that London goes away with a very good opinion of how they do things ceremonially. <clears throat> right, enjoy it, enjoy it. Come on, do the grip. the storm. Keep yourself. Oh, vanity of vanity. All these vanity say the preacher. This is the first time cameras have been allowed in to an installation ceremony.
you would advance the pedestal. Place both hands on the bottom of the second floor and you will read your obligation. To order, brethren. I, Anthony Paul Henderson, in the presence of the Most High, and before this worshipful provincial Grand Lodge of ancient, free, and accepted Masons, regularly convened and assembled, do hereby and hereon most solemnly engage myself to accept the office of Provincial Grand Master of the Masonic Province of Bedfordshire. You will seal that with your lips. Rise, duly obligated, Provincial Grand Master. Brother Anthony Paul Henderson, it gives me much pleasure on behalf of the Most Worshipful the Grand Master to invest you with your chain as Provincial Grand Master for this distinguished province of Bedfordshire. I just wanted it to last for such a long time. And I wanted the moment to just go into real slow motion, but it, it all goes over so quickly, you know, so you think, oh, I want to, you want to sort of bottle it and savour it and then use it again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, it was a wonderful moment and a wonderful moment. Wow, where can I go from here? Home. <laughs> ah. Leadership is a very difficult thing, but you've got to remember, rather like Andrew Bonalore Law said in the 1920s about the Conservative Party, I am their leader, I must follow them. A provincial Grand Master not only has to have the vision of where he wants to take the province, but he has to remember to take his members with him. Mike, as always, you've been a well done, superstar. Yeah. Thanks, Congratulations, well done. Well done. Have a great one. Thanks for being here, guys. Take yeah. care. Cheers, Keith. Cheers, 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 Cheers. 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 Many people have said that Freemasonry will make good men better, and that certainly has been the case in my case, uh, because I dread to think what sort of man I would have been if I had not had Freemasonry. Do you pledge your honour as a man and your fidelity? In Oxfordshire, Josh Spencer is now worshipful master of his lodge, which means a lot more ritual to learn. Paul. While in Bedfordshire, for father and son, Edward and James Wooten, Paul. masonry has done its work. You ready? Yeah, go on in. Paul. And at the Russell Lodge, Anthony is Provincial Grand Master of all he surveys. Wow, look at this. God, who would ever thought it? Yeah, place in history for a while now. So mold it be, so mold it be. Shout out to all my brothers through Freemasonry. Let's meet on the level, I earned three degrees. Had to kill me cause they couldn't get my secrets.